chemistry lecture number two. What is density? I'm going to show you something kind of interesting. If we take two different cans of uh, soda and drop them into this container of water, something interesting happens. Um, if I take just regular Coke, sinks to the bottom of our uh, container. But if I take the uh, Diet Coke, it floats. Hmm, interesting. So we have regular Coke, which sinks, and then Diet Coke, which floats. Now, why does that happen? Well, one clue is the difference in the mass. Uh, the Diet Coke has a mass of about 385 uh, grams, whereas the one that floats, this one has 369 grams of uh, mass to it. And this little trick works with, uh, I guess, uh, Sprite also. Whoops. Oh, how about that? Um, Okay, well, always test something before you uh, demonstrate it. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, no, that's right. That's a diet uh, Sprite. So that one floats, and then the regular uh, Sprite, uh, that sinks, okay? So we know that uh, mass has something to do with it, but let me show you uh, something different. Here I have a strip of aluminum foil and this uh, tiny little strip of aluminum foil is 0.28 grams. And if I put it in the water and just give it a slight push to break the surface tension, um, you should see it slowly sink. Okay, so a strip of aluminum foil will sink. If I take two sheets of aluminum foil and fold them and make it into a box, I'll have a box like this. And the mass of this box is 7.99 grams. So this is 7.99 grams. And the uh, strip of paper, or I'm sorry, the strip of aluminum foil here is 0.28 grams. So this is certainly not as heavy as the box. So the box is heavier, but when I put it into the water, it floats. And I can push down on it but that won't break the surface tension. In fact, it seems to push back a little bit. So why is it that a piece of aluminum that weighs less sinks and uh, two sheets of aluminum that weigh more float? Well, one obvious difference is in the size of the volume. The uh, amount of space that this aluminum box takes up is 840 uh, milliliters, whereas this tiny little strip of uh, Aluminum, if I were to uh, ball it up and squish it, it would only take up uh, 0.103 uh, milliliter. So it doesn't take up as much space. So volume seems to have something to do with why something might sink or float. So let's see if we can uh, sort of write that out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the camera so we can see the board on which I'm writing on. So please be patient with me while we make a adjustment. All right, sorry for the motion sickness. Okay, and there is my board that I want to show to you folks. Okay, so to sort of summarize, Objects with large mass, if it's heavier, it tends to sink. If it has a large volume, it tends to float. All right, so let's combine these two properties. What if an object had a large mass but a small volume? Well, if it has a large mass, it would cause it to sink. And if it has a small volume, it would be more likely to sink. All right, what if it has a small mass and a large volume? Well. That would tend to float. So both of these factors play a role in whether or not something sinks or floats. The ratio of mass to volume determines its floating tendency. And if mass is large relative to volume, it's going to tend to sink. Whereas if uh, the volume is larger relative to the mass, it's going to tend to float.
the ratio of mass to volume is called density. All right, and density is just mass divided by volume. And we can use a formula to express it. D equals M over V. M is mass, measured in grams. V is volume, measured in milliliters. And sometimes instead of milliliters, you use cubic centimeters. And D is the density in grams per milliliter. So the ratio of mass to volume just tells you how much mass is crammed into a certain amount of space. And things that are more dense have more matter crammed into that same amount of space compared to other things of uh, equal volume. So in the case of our aluminum strip, the aluminum strip had a mass of 0.28 grams. That's how heavy it was. And the amount of space it took up was 0.103 milliliters. Uh, that's one tenth of a little sugar cube size. So its density was 2.7 grams per milliliter. Uh, the aluminum box, on the other hand, was much larger. It had a volume of 840 milliliters. Um, and its mass was 7.99 grams. Um, the ratio of uh, Volume to mass here, this is like 100 to 1, so the volume was almost 100 times greater than the uh, mass. And here, the mass is twice as large as the volume here. Well, in any case, the density of the aluminum box is much less since the ratio of uh, mass to volume is uh, much different, 0 0.0095 grams per milliliter. All right. So if something has a large volume relative to its mass, it's going to be low density. And if it has uh, a higher mass compared to its volume, uh, it'll have a higher density. The density of water is a 1 gram per milliliter. And this is kind of handy to know because if an object has a greater density than water, it will sink. If it has a uh, lesser density than water, it will float. Uh, objects will sink in a fluid if they are denser than the fluid. And objects will float in a fluid if they are less dense than the fluid. So we can use uh, this property of fluid density to show some uh, interesting things. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the camera back uh, to show you a couple of other demonstrations. But I want you to see the properties of uh, some substances before we do that. Rubbing alcohol, it's a liquid that uh, I guess it's used for sterilizing things. Its density is 0.87. Water is a fluid we're all familiar with. Its density is 1.00. And salt water. Uh, just add salt to water until it's saturated, and its density is 1.2 grams per milliliter. So what would happen if we put these two substances into uh, some of these fluids? Ice has a density of 0.9 grams per milliliter, and an egg has a density of 1.08 uh, grams per milliliter. OK, I'm going to adjust the camera again so we can see these demonstrations. Hold on. And up we go. All right. So there we are. OK. So I'm going to do that. OK. Well, let's see what happens when we uh, take different objects and put them into uh, different fluids. So let's see. What do we have here? Ah, water. OK, so water has a density of one gram per milliliter. And then we have an egg. So the egg is 1.08 grams per uh, milliliter. So an egg, when you put it into regular water, that's just going to drop straight down to the bottom, all right? which makes sense. The egg has greater density than water. So let me retrieve this. If, however, we take salt water, so that's salt water. I don't know if you were able to see that. No, you weren't able to see it. Let me redo the uh, demonstration with the uh, egg so you can get a uh, better view of it. Sorry about that. All right. So here's the egg put into regular water. And that'll just drop straight down. And then. Take that out. We have salt water. And the egg floats. All right. Salt water is more dense than 
uh, the egg. So the egg can't float if it's not, uh, or the egg will float if it's uh, less dense than the uh, liquid it's in. All right, and here's one other one that kind of looks uh, interesting. Let's get rid of the salt water. And this time we have rubbing alcohol. Now, rubbing alcohol has a density of uh, 0.87 grams per milliliter. So if I take ice, ice has a density of, let's see, what is it? 0.93. So water has a density of one, ice has a density of 0.93. So ice floats in water. All right. But if you take ice and put it into rubbing alcohol, which has a density of 0.87, it just drops straight to the bottom. All right. So ice doesn't float in rubbing alcohol because uh, it's more dense. Okay. All right. That was fun. So. In the next uh, lesson that we have, we're going to learn how to do some calculations with density. Now, if you need to if you need to get a PDF copy of uh, this lecture, just go to richardlouis.com, and it's chemistry lecture number two. What is density? All right. Thanks for watching.